All right, guys, the NECXM29 is finally finished. I've got the restoration completely done. The monitor's put back together, and I thought it would be just perfect to pair this with an actual NEC console. So that's what I've got up here is my NEC Core Graphics console running to RGB uh, through a little dongle that's made by Insurrection Industries. It's just a little pack you slap in the back of your core graphics or other turbo graphics system and it does output an RGB signal that will sync up with this monitor without any extra sync processing. So that's very cool. And it looks great on the shadow mask, kind of something about this style of game and uh, era specifically looks awesome on the shadow mask. Now, let's talk about the screen. You're always gonna be limited when you're working with larger CRTs and then you might run into some things. The, um, as far as the convergence in the top corners, that was still a little bit out, uh, especially in the extreme portions of the corners. And that was because adding additional uh, strips with convergent strips with magnets in them did not help. It would actually make every time something would look worse by adding more strips. So that wasn't going to solve the issue. We were able to dial everything in the center of the screen really nicely. So that convergence looked great, but the, the corners didn't look as great. It was definitely a way big improvement. Uh, the geometry looks a lot better than it did when we started. Uh, but back to that convergence issue, some of these things were problems where the yoke uh, could have used a fresh reseeding. However, the yoke plastic was extremely brittle inside and I was concerned that too much wiggling and uh, working with the yoke would actually cause damage to the plastic. And when that happens, I've had that happen before in a five inch PVM and you, you lose the yoke and the yoke rings, they just crack and shatter. And unless you have a replacement yoke, you're in big trouble because then you'll lose the entire uh, like one third or a quarter of the screen. You'll lose convergence completely. It's easier to mitigate on a small monitor, but on a big monitor like this it would pretty much ruin it. The uh, settings for geometry and things like that, you also have some color palettes. They're really simple to get into. There isn't a sub menu. You simply press the button on here and over across the right hand top are all your settings that are available. So the first one is brightness and contrast, but if you scroll through them, you'll have the next three will all be different geometries that you can uh, use. And I would recommend just spending a lot of time working with those because uh, they're not, you know, they're, they're pretty simple to work through, but it's not the easiest process. It takes a little longer uh, than it would with say a PVM since you're scrolling through with just those two buttons and there's not an actual number setting when you save it, it just goes by like a volume bar almost. So it's a little bit trickier to adjust geometry on, but it's still very able to do that. You can also adjust things like your screen tilts even, so you don't have to worry about a yoke tilt on this CRT ever. It does have a very nice high quality remote that does give you a lot of geometry controls just from the remote, not all of them, but a lot of them. And it also gives you like degauss, volume controls. There are speakers built into this monitor, stereo speakers. And then you have the option to go stereo out. And one quick thing let's talk about was the fan modification. And there was a lot of great feedback on the fan modification and some questions about it. So I thought I'd maybe I'd clear things up. Yeah, there's, I did discuss things about, first off, uh, my idea for how thermals could maybe be better. And people brought up good points to combat that with saying, you know, you don't want to bring in f air over the components. Uh, you know, you could get around that by adding a dust filter in the back uh, in front of the fan. So when it sucked things in, you could just have a filter there and then you clean the filter periodically. So I think that you could still get around that if you wanted to go to the extra step and install a dust filter and then flip the fan around and that way it's pulling in cool air and exhausting it out the top. And so that would have been probably a little bit of an improvement I still believe on this monitor. Now, it's still fine the way it is. It's just um, people were really concerned that me disabling the alarms would cause the monitor to fail down the road if the Noctua fans failed. Now the likelihood of these fans failing is really, really low, but you can still 
hear the fans if you get your ear right up next to the, all the vent holes. If you look on the back of the monitor, there is still the main vent hole in the back. And even though it's covered by the plastic shell, you can easily see the fan uh, right next to the input board. So if you wanted to periodically go in and check your monitor, you could obviously just run a test, see the fans are running. And even with the fans being quieter, you could still hear them if you, again, put your ear next to it. But you can also see them working. And you can even see the ones in the top by just looking down. Or you can, since they're exhaust fans, you could put your hand over the vent and feel them push in the air. So you can go in and still confirm the fans are running. And the fans don't have to be running for a CRT to work. We've seen Sony for decades make CRTs, and they really didn't have any besides some of the really encased uh, commercial CRTs for uh, PCs, and that would have been like in the 90s. They did have a lot of casing and plastic, and they would add fans in those. Other than that, they really avoided fans for the most part, so you don't have to have them. But it does help extend the life of components when you're drawing fresh air on them and keeping them cooler. Just like when I'm here in the shop, if I'm sitting here working and it gets to be 80, 90 degrees, even just something as simple as putting a single fan pointed at me cools me down enough to be able to make me help continue working. So that's a lot of the way these things work with old electronics. They're still going to be able to perform that function. And heat is really the element of where it starts to stress them out and put stress on the parts and break them down. So adding that cooling system is a benefit that I think we could even really go in and study and maybe add fans into some of the Sony BVMs and PVMs and uh, other Ikigamis and JVCs that are high end that don't have fans. We could put fans in there to blow cool air over those hot zones. And that way we can extend the life of the boards and the components in there already and fans are pretty simple uh, to install. We'll talk about that, but they're also pretty cheap. Even the best ones are less than 20 bucks shipped and really can make a big difference. But that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the series. And more than likely, we'll see more of these monitors in the future come into the shop now that we've gotten one work through. Uh, and I just want to say uh, thank you again to everybody for watching it, the entire series. If you haven't missed anything to this point, you can go back and look at the playlist uh, documented in the description for the video. If you did enjoy it, please leave me some feedback, or if you have any suggestions, leave some feedback too. Um, please leave a like if you enjoyed it too. So I'll see you next time with some more retro content.